All right, so we'll sing the Namameshwaram prayers, the Dhammadas to come, before we begin. can see you. slight technical glitch there. <laughs> okay, so reading from the Krishna book again. <clears throat> and we've reached uh, 
the chapter entitled Subdu Subduing Kalia, which is chapter 16. <clears throat> and we're beginning from the paragraph. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. It's, uh, it is confirmed in the Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Yeah? Thanks, Jeffrey Prabhu. <laughs> All right. So before we begin, I'll just sing the invocation prayer. Krishna, 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 hey, Krishna, 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 hey, Krishna, 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 Krishna. Krishna Krishna Rakshamam Krishna 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 Pahimam Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rakshamam Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahimam All right, so as usual, I'd like to uh, ask devotees to nominate themselves for reading by putting a number of reading order in the chat box. So it'd be nice if everyone could read a paragraph or two. So please enlist a number in the chat box, beginning from the first reader with number one. The first paragraph is very short, so if you, even if you're not a big on reading, this is a short one to begin with. So be so this is up for grabs, paragraph number one. <laughs> Anyone? We've got someone who's chosen paragraph number three. Okay, I could start by reading and then uh, let's see how we go. Feel free to uh, comment and question at the end of each paragraph as we discuss so i don't want to have to ask everyone you know if there's anything to share we can just come in and, and speak feel free so <clears throat> it is confirmed in the jaitanya charita amrita that the living entities wandering within the universe in various species of life can get the seed of devotional service by the mercy of krishna and the spiritual master and thus their path of liberation can be cleared. So we're reading now the, uh, just a comment here. We're reading now the prayers offered by the wives of the uh, demonic snake, Kalia, who has entered the Amuna River and has been uh, poisoning the residents of Vrindavan. Um, and therefore Krishna has come to uh, to defeat him, and in doing so, the wives of the snake, uh, or he's not an ordinary snake. This is actually a celestial snake who who is granted permission to live here, but has overstayed his welcome. His wives are praying uh, to Krishna for um, uh, for them for for him to be freed for Krishna to have mercy on him, okay? Um, so this paragraph we've just read in context of this chapter comes from a very famous verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, that is, Paramanda Pramanda Bhumite Konobhagya Vanajiv Guru Krishna presided by Bhakti Lata Bij. Now, without the mercy of Krishna and the spiritual master, one can't have any devotion. So it's a nice place to start, actually, because um, they're seeking Krishna's mercy. Devotees seek Krishna's mercy or the Guru's mercy for bhakti. 
Um, why would that why would that be the case? Why is it that bhakti is different to um, you know scholarship or studying the scriptures or performing austerity or other processes to attain God? Why do you think that um, this mercy of Krishna, mercy of devotees, Vaishnavas is important here? What do we think about this? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. I think bhakti is the is the prescribed process for Kali Yuga and by following um, the Guru Parambara, it's um, it's easily uh, it's easy to get mercy of Krishna. By following Guru Parampara, it's easy to get mercy of Krishna, yes. That's right, Mataji. <clears throat> So yeah, we can get Krishna's mercy through the line of gurus. Krishna gives his mercy. That's an authorized way of getting mercy from Krishna. Um, but more specifically, why why is there a need to get mercy from Krishna? Or a guru for that matter? I think the... Um... To get the Krishna's mercy, you need to have a, a, a Guru's mercy. Like if you're going to go and want to see a prime minister or president, you cannot just go and knock the door and say, I'm going to come and see a prime minister or president. You would have to go through the channels. So our channels to go through the Guru is Guru Parampara. So whatever we offer, it goes through the Parampara. So uh, our Guru and then his guru and it's uh, leading up to um brahma and you know like uh, the lord so we cannot just approach directly to krishna for the mercy yeah that's right so our our devotional service is carried by the spiritual master to krishna that's also a very good point yeah and one point i thought of as well was that um you can only get bhakti from bhakta. If someone has devotion, then they can give devotion to others. So we are trying to get something which is very special. We're not so much after knowledge or so much after austerities. Um, actually, we're after devotion to Krishna. And so one who has devotion, they can share that devotion. I was thinking in this way. That's also another way of looking at it also. <clears throat> so it says here like that one can get the seed of devotional service by the mercy of Krishna and the spiritual master. So this happens at the time that a devotee gets initiation, spiritual initiation, or they get a spiritual name. They're given that seed of devotional service. They're given the beads. You give the Hare Krishna mantra, which has been chanted on by the spiritual master on those beads. And in that way, they get the seed. Just like when you have a, a plant, it starts from seed. Then how does that, that seed, it grows and turns into fruit. It gives fruit. So in the same way, the spiritual master, he gives the seed, he gives the beads. And by chanting on those beads regularly, then one's devotion grows, it flowers into something we can actually offer, offer to Krishna through the mercy of the spiritual master. Okay. So Jay Prakash Prabhu, would you like to read next, please? Yeah. Thank you. The Nag, the Nag Patnis continued, we therefore offer our respectable respectful obeisances unto you, our dear Lord, because you are the Supreme Person who are living as the super soul within every living entity. Although you are transcendental to the cosmic manifestation, everything is resting in you. You are the personified in the fatigable eternal time. The entire time force is existing in you and you are therefore the seer and the embodiment of total time in the shape of past, present and future, month, day, hour, moment, everything in other words. 
oh Lord, you can see perfectly all the activities happening in every moment, in every hour, in every day, in every month, in every year, past, present and future. You are yourself the universal form and yet you are different from the universe. You are simultaneously one with the different from the universe. We therefore offer our respectful obeisances unto you. You are yourself the whole universe and yet you are the creator of the whole universe. You are the superintendent and the maintainer of this whole universe. And, <coughs> and you are its original cause. Although you are present within the universe by your three qualitative incarnations, Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara, you are transcendental to the material creation. Although you are the cause of the appearance of all kinds of living entities, their senses, their lives, their minds, their intelligence, you are to be realized by your internal energy. Let us therefore offer our respectful obeisances unto you, who are unlimited, finer than the finest, the center of all creation, and the knower of everything. Different varieties of philosophical speculators try to reach you. You are the ultimate goal of all philosophical efforts, and it is actually only you who are described by all philosophies and by different kinds of doctrines. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto you, because you are the origin of all scripture and the source of knowledge. You are the root of all evidence, and you are the supreme person who can bestow upon us the supreme knowledge. You are the cause of all kinds of desires, and you are the cause of the of all kinds of satisfaction. You are the Vedas personified. Therefore, we offer our respectful obeisances. <clears throat> so, these are, um, these prayers, they're, they're also very deep in terms of philosophy as well, isn't it? Even though they're offered by the wives of the snake Kaliya, and we've seen that um, through Bhagavatam, or through the specifically the Krishna book. You know, we've read the prayers of uh, Devaki and Vasudev, the prayers of um, the prayers of the uh, Nalakuvera Mani Griva, who were the, the trees that Krishna broke down in the form of Damodar. Yeah, in the prayers of Brahma in just a recent chapter. And here as well, like you see this very, there's a philosophical aspect to their prayers. They have a really deep understanding of who is Krishna, isn't it? In these prayers. So which themes can you pick out from these prayers for discussion? And then we can talk about those a little bit. Feel free to call out. So just taking note where it says that you are the universe and yet you are the creator. Yeah, okay. Yet you are yourself the universal form and yet you are the creator as well. Mm. So maybe the question is why why are these two differences are there, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Okay, why do you think that might be, if we were to guess? Um, because he's part of the universe himself. Yeah. Although he's the creator, he's a part of it as well. Hmm. Yeah, this is that's that's yeah, very nice answer actually. Thank you. So, see, just by thinking about it, you can understand it. Yeah. So we don't have this experience of anything really in the world where, um, where you you create something and it's actually part of yourself. We can't actually do that. Krishna only can do that, which is why they're glorifying that feature of him. You see. Because Krishna exists outside of the universe, first of all. He existed before the universe. 
So there's the prayers like Alamla. Uh, Narayan Parovya Parova. That means that like, Narayan, you're outside of the universe. So if you're within, if you're within the universe, if Krishna is within the universe only, then he cannot be God. Because that means the universe is greater than him. Right? Mm -hmm. So he can't be in that position of being within the universe only. And uh, Krishna also doesn't remain only aloof outside of the universe. Because if that's the case, then there's no way for us to contact him or have any relationship with him. If he's, if he's not close to us, mm -hmm. if he's not with us. So you picked on a nice point here actually that Krishna is outside of the universe because he has to create it. And at the same time he comes into the universe yeah. for us to be with us. But even more than that also is that is made, the universe is made from him. It's made from his energy. So we can't make anything ourselves. We cannot make any energy from our, for ourselves. Everything we experience in this world is made of the ingredients of this world. Example, if I want to make a car, I have to take the metals, I have to take the different, the rubber, the different ingredients, the leather, what have you, the different ingredients and build a car from those raw ingredients. Anything in this world has to be built from some ingredients. And that's provided by nature. So we have no experience of, even though science is so great and, you know, there's so many technological and medical advancements. There's nothing that can be created outside of what already exists. It's simply different combinations of what already exists. So the source of all those things is Krishna. Krishna is the source of all these ingredients of the universe. So those are Krishna's qualities in those different ingredients. That's why he has so many unlimited qualities. Would anyone else like to pick on any points further? Otherwise we can move on to the next paragraph. Okay, thank you Shashi Mataji. Um, so my dad will read next. Dad, you'll read now. Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo. Am I reading now? Yeah, the paragraph begins, Our dear Lord. Our dear Lord, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. And you are also the supreme enjoyer. You have now appeared as the son of Vasudev, a manifestation of state of pure goodness. You are the predominating deities of mind and intelligence. Aniruddha and Parayatmana and you are the Lord of all Vaishnavas. By your expansion, as the Katra Vahya, namely Vasudev, Sanskarsana, Aniruddha, and Prayayuma, you are the cause of the development of mind and intelligence. By your activities only, the living entities become covered by the forgetfulness or discover their real identity. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter. The Lord is sitting as a super soul in everyone's heart. And due to his presence, the living entity either forgets himself or revives his original identity. We can partially understand that you are within our heart as the witness of all our activities. But it is very difficult to appreciate your presence, although every one of us can do some to some extent. 
you are the supreme controller of both the material and spiritual energies. Therefore, you are the supreme leader. Although you are the different from this cosmetic manifestation, you are witness, creator, and very ingredient of all cosmetic manifestations. We therefore offer you our respect of excellence unto you. Okay, thank you. So, it's more dramatic having an echo as well, part of the reading. There's sometimes background echo. <laughs> Makes it very dramatic, isn't it? <laughs> um, so first they're saying um, about how Krishna is within everything and also outside of everything. That was the last paragraph. Now in this paragraph, they're talking about the same again with specific examples. So they're saying how <clears throat> this term comes up, Chaturvyuha, it comes up often in the Vedas and the Puranas. <clears throat> These are basically different expansions of Krishna, that's all. So So these four, they are known as Vasudev, Sankoshan, Anirudha, and Pradyumna. These are four expansions of the Lord. And uh, said here that uh, you are the cause of the development of mind and intelligence. Yeah. So basically the, the body, the mind, the intelligence, and uh, all the facilities we have, they're all being operated by Krishna. They're all working because Krishna is making them work. <clears throat> so, why why are the um, why are the wives of Kali are praying in this way? It's important to, you know, to understand that in the context of all of these philosophical points. This is the essential thing, isn't it? Um, my my understanding of this is that. Uh, they're, they're obviously, um, they're appreciating that Krishna has provided Kalya with this great power to do everything that he could do, isn't it? Krishna is there watching every moment. Kalya, it's not that Krishna doesn't know what's happening. Krishna has let him build up his power up to this, to such a great extent. And now Krishna has come to defeat him. So they're appreciating this point. Now Krishna, you've given the mind, you've given the uh, body, the words, the intelligence, all the, the facilities that one has. And you're always witnessing the activities of each and every one of us. Uh, by the same time, Krishna is aloof. He lets us do as we like with the, uh, with the energies he's giving us, his energies. And we see that in our own life as well. If we get something from Krishna, we can either use it to serve him or we can use it selfishly for our own needs. Mm -hmm. uh, if Krishna gives us, you know, somehow we get a bonus at work or something, then, you know, do we thank Krishna for it? Do we use it to serve devotees and, um, and improve the, the devotional service in our life? Or do we easily waste it on something? Um, just one example, but you know, different ways in life we can see, we can think about for ourselves. <clears throat> if all these things are provided by Krishna, and Krishna is watching us every moment, are we using them in the right way? As it says here at the end, you are the witness and the creator, and the very ingredient of this cosmic manifestation. We therefore offer our respectful obeisances unto you. This is like the really um, significant point here. So they're appreciating that everything comes from Krishna, using it for him also. <clears throat> so they're begging for mercy from Krishna because they can see that that mistake has happened, that Kali has had all this power and not served Krishna with that. <clears throat> 
we can have another reader now. Would anyone like to read next? Sure. Unless there's any comments, questions. Can we have another reader? Shamrani Mataji, thank you. Yeah, I can read. Our dear Lord, in the matter of creating this cosmic manifestation, personally, you have nothing to ex exert by expanding your different kinds of energy, namely the modes of goodness, the mode of passion, and the mode of ignorance. Mm -hmm. and create, maintain, annihilate this cosmic manifestation. As the controller of the entire time force, you can simply glance over the material energy, create this universe, and energize the different forces of material nature, which are acting differently in different creatures. No one can estimate, estimate their fall, how your activities are going on within this world. Our dear Lord, although you have expanded into the three principal deities of this universe, namely Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva, for creation, maintenance and destruction, your appearance as Lord Vishnu is actually for the benediction of living creatures. Therefore, for those who are actually peaceful, and who are aspiring after the supreme supreme peace worship of your peaceful appearance as lord vishnu is recommended O oh lord we are submitting our prayers unto you you can appreciate that this poor serpent is going to give up his life you know that for us women our lives and everything are our husbands therefore we are praying unto you that you kindly excuse Kaliya, our husband, because if this serpent dies, then we shall be in great dif difficulty. Looking upon us only, please excuse this great offender. Our dear Lord, every living creature is your offspring and you maintain everyone. This serpent is also your offspring and you can excuse him although he has offended you un offended you undoubtedly with without knowing your potency we are praying that he may be excused for this time our dear lord we are offering our loving service unto you because we are all eternal servitor of your lordship you can order us and ask us to do whatever you please Every living being can be relieved from all kinds of despair if he agrees to abide by your orders. Thank you, Shamrani Mataji. So this is the conclusion now of the prayer, these last two paragraphs we've read. And then Prabhupada comments on them further. And then it proceeds to the end of the chapter. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we've um as i pointed out in previous weeks these prayers are a nice way to learn um how devotees are submitting their desires to krishna if you remember when we read the pastime of um the cowherd boys fleeing to krishna to go to dalavan yeah they their conversation with him even was much like a prayer wasn't it you know they were submitting their desire to krishna and that was very um instructive in the, in the development of that prayer and i feel like um in these last couple of paragraphs in the concluding paragraphs um it may bring to, together some of the points we've discussed uh in the this week and last week uh, in the prayers of the the wives of Kaliya. <clears throat> See this prayer it began from uh, <clears throat> the Nagapatnis were um, started their prayer, the opening was uh, oh dear Lord, you are equal to everyone hmm? and it and it finishes in much the same way, isn't it? That's interesting. See? So this is the point that 
They're saying that Krishna, you're equal to everyone. Because you know everything of the past, of the present, of the future. Uh, for you, nobody is high, nobody is low. Krishna, you have created everybody. You've created the desires. You've created the facilities which they can have to enjoy those desires or suffer from those desires. <clears throat> so this is um, the prayers. They actually know Krishna very well. They're certainly devotees of Krishna to be able to offer such prayers, isn't it? We can see that. Um, when we first started reading these prayers, there was some interesting opinions about um, the, the mood in which the prayers were being offered and the motivation of the prayers. I don't know if you remember this discussion we had, that um, some of us thought the prayers were being offered because the, the wives didn't want to be without a husband. Some of us thought that they were offering prayers because uh, they, uh, they didn't want the husband to get punished for the benefit of the husband. And then another point of view was that the prayers are being offered because uh, they are also um, have the same mood as the Lord. They're equal, they have equal vision. And therefore they're submitting that plea to Krishna. So all of these are actually true. Um, but we can see that with the prayers that they're offering, the structure of the prayers, they're, um, they're very intent. They have a very intent purpose. That they're making the point first that Krishna is the Lord. And they're finishing the point, their, their prayer with this same point. That you can order us to do whatever you please. See? So they're leaving it to Krishna. So actually they're certainly devotees of Krishna in offering these prayers. They, know, they don't have any selfish intention from these prayers. Um, so also it's... In, um, it's important to note here that the, the prayers they're offering are still very personal. And just because they are not, they don't have any personal in, uh, self, selfish motivation from the prayer, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they, don't have a, they don't have a personal desire. This is important to note because we are personalist. Our, our Krishna consciousness, our philosophy, the Vedanta philosophy, it is about personal connection with Bhagavan, personal connection with Krishna. So we have our, we do have um, personal desires, which can be fulfilled by Krishna, and it's about acknowledging that. So, <clears throat> because their their desires are are correct, or they're you know they're in line with Krishna's desires, then Krishna will fulfill them. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's known as impersonal. Our philosophy is not impersonal. Meaning that it's not that um, we don't have any desire, we are desireless. Not that whatever Krishna says goes. That's, that's true. Whatever Krishna wants will happen for sure. But Krishna is interested in relationships. Hmm? Krishna, uh, sometimes it's said by devotees that Krishna, he's not in the religion business. He's in the relationship business. <laughs> he's not after us to just perform lots of rituals and religious activities. He's after having a relationship with us. And then when we try to have a relationship with him, then religion becomes very personable to us. The religious activities, the spiritual activities, they become very personal. They become about our relationship, our personal relationship and prayer to Krishna. So um, I'm swaying from the point slightly, but um, they're offering these prayers first, acknowledging that Krishna is the Lord. And then they're submitting their desires that Krishna, you please protect our husband. You please protect us who will be without a husband. And that's, uh, that's completely acceptable. That's completely natural. For a wife to request the protection of a husband, to request the 
protection for themselves if they were without a husband. But in the mood that Krishna, it's up to you. Krishna, you are the Lord. We, we acknowledge that first. <clears throat> so this is something to learn about how to, to pray to Krishna, isn't it? What do, you, what do you all think about from what we've read in these prayers and discussed over this week and last week? Was there anything that stood up for you all in these prayers? We were actually discussing this um, kind of, we were asking our Guru Maharaj that um, how do we pray? Because sometimes you don't know how to put it in kind of in words. And then he said really nicely, he said, you, you always, um, um, you always um, ask, uh, pray um, to the Lord in surrender way. And you always say um, that if you so desire, Krishna, if you so desire, mm. so whenever you pray. Um, very, very important. Yes, Mataji, thank you for adding that, bringing that can, point up. Can I say something, Prabhu? First of all, yeah. apologies for being very late. Uh, um, so, I mean, I, I kind of feel it's very interesting that the the wives, they don't blame Krishna, they don't lament um, that, you know, their husband is in danger. Um, the first thing they do is ask for Krishna's mercy. So the fact that right from the beginning, they knew that Krishna is the supreme and all depends on his mercy and also the fact that Krishna was in the right and their husband was in the wrong. Um, so they they started their prayers with this prior knowledge that they are entirely at the mercy of Krishna um, and only Krishna can save them. So uh, there is no there is no point in lamenting because they, they knew their husband was not, not right. Yeah. They're very honest, aren't they, in their prayers? Hmm? Yeah. And um, we read about that humility, didn't we? Um, yeah. And it was interesting that Srila Prabhupada correlated many of these prayers to another set of prayers. And what are those prayers? Does anyone remember? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Smita Mataji. Hare Krishna. Is it the Shikha? I can't pronounce it. Shikastakam. Yeah. yeah, that's almost right. Yes, the Sikshastakam prayer. That's right. Yeah. Sikshastakam. Yeah, that means that uh, Shiksha means the instructions. And Ashtaka is um, just like we have the Damodha Ashtakam, the Sikshastakam. Ashtakam is like, um, it's a poem of eight verses. Ashtaka. So it's like Lord Chaitanya's instructions in a poem of eight verses. That's right, the Shikshastakam. So Prabhupada in many places, didn't he, correlate these prayers with the Shikshastakam? And, uh, and just coming to Panchali's point about uh, this, they were very much in the honest mood and a humble mood and a mood of, um, you know, like a submissive mood, isn't it? Very submissive mood these prayers have been. And so this is very uh, much the mood of the Sikshastakam prayers as well. And depending on mercy, depending on mercy of Krishna, they're very, they know in truth that Krishna, he is everything and he can give his mercy to anyone. <clears throat> but uh, Prabhuji, you, you earlier said about a relationship uh, now, some people don't, I mean, you know, living entities, they don't know Krishna or, or when they are just about to know them, that feeling of a relationship, like, that will come eventually, won't it? Yes, that's right. So we shouldn't uh, make that an artificial thing. That, um, so that's, also, that's known as sahajya when we artificially imitate a relationship with Krishna to think that I'm a gopi or I'm a gopa or I'm a flute or I'm a peacock, you know? Um, because as we read, the residence of Vrindavana, extraordinary. Even Lord Brahma is praying that if he could, he could even be the dust in, in Raj. 
or if he could even be a shrub or a bush. You know, he's not praying for even you know a great position like a gopi or or something. You know, so the point isn't to imitate a relationship with Krishna. I know that wasn't your intent. Asking. Yeah. No. Yeah. My... I understand. But um, at the same time, we can try to relate to Krishna from where we are in the world right now. Um, one of my mentors, he told me uh, in a nice um, in a nice phrase. He 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 says it in his classes from time to time that Krishna consciousness is ideal and real. Krishna consciousness is both real and ideal. Is real because where we are now in the material world, there's always going to be ups and downs. We have to remember Krishna when we're going through those downs. Even we have to remember Krishna when we're going through the ups. And and having that relationship with him in the situation we're in. Just like they're praying here that Krishna, you are the past, present, future. You are every day, every month, every hour, every minute. So they have such a great realization that Krishna is with them all the time. So it's very real. And at the same time, Krishna consciousness is very ideal. Because there is an ideal place. It's not that we have to be in this material world, life after life. But there is an ideal place in the spiritual world where Krishna is with his very dear devotees. And we want to attain that also. And we should pray for that also. And especially. So I hope that answers the question in some, some way. Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I, it's like if you, 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 you can like somebody and you can hate somebody or you can like somebody and then you start growing to love them. So what I'm trying to say, that, that feeling of loving Krishna will eventually come due to his mercy, right? That's right, yeah. And also there's past karma as well of ours because if Krishna is with it, within us and he can uh, make us forgetful or he can make us uh, remember, then there are lots of things that... Um, and does that mean he controls our feelings as well? Or is well, it the kind of people we are? Well, um, see, the thing is, knowing about Krishna and relating to Krishna, as you said, is two different things. So knowing that Krishna is the Supreme, knowing that Krishna is God, knowing that Krishna can do all the things he can do is one thing. But then the, the real thing is actually to approach Krishna. See, that's where sadhana, that's where practice, spiritual practice comes in. And that's really how we develop that relationship with Krishna. Um, not simply by knowing him, but actually by trying to relate with him every day, by meditating on his holy names, by being with him in the form of his names and in the form of serving him in the deity, in the murti. And, and in that way, like serving the devotees who are related to him, so these are all very practical ways in which we can uh, relate to Krishna, which we can have a relationship with Krishna until he reveals that ideal relationship with him. So he's here with us in real and also in ideal as well. Thank you. Does anyone else want to add anything for this? Comments to this? I just wanted to add one thing. Um, it's not relating to the last question. Um, it's just relating to something I was thinking about uh, um, Kalia, um, Krishna dancing on Kalia. And I just felt that, you know, uh, he was so fortunate that uh, at least he was uh, uh, able to um, have the dust of Krishna's uh, lotus feet because. Um, quite often we read in Bhagavatam that, you know, um, all these rishis and all these sadhus who are uh, the whole life, they just uh, do austerities and maybe many, many lifetimes they do these austerities just to even 
uh, have the dust of his lotus feet. So I think uh, Kalia was very, very fortunate, even after his um, atrocities towards the devotees, Krishna literally was very kind to him. He danced on him. But at the same time, like you see, all these um, bad karmas he uh, created for himself by disturbing all the rich buses and, you know, killing all these uh, innocent birds and everything who were flying about, about the lake um, with his poisonous uh, fumes. Um, he would have occurred so much sins. But it was Krishna's mercy, and he only had to suffer like uh, probably a couple of hours when Krishna was dancing on top of him, um, and all this poison came out. That was all very much of Krishna's mercy. But if Krishna didn't have this mercy on him, he would have to suffer so many lifetimes for all these atrocities he did. And that reminded me about uh, Jagai and Madai um, in uh, Lord. Chaitanya's uh, pastimes with all these atrocities um, they did and how Lord Nityanand um, and uh, Haridas Thakur was so merciful on these two um, well demon but um, it just reminds sometimes you know that sometimes Krishna's mercy can come in various ways but Kalia was very fortunate to get this mercy although it um, seemed like that you know krishna was punishing but to me it felt like it was krishna's mercy that he didn't have to go ahead and suffer in so many lifetimes for all the sins he did yeah that's right thank you mom yeah there's so many aspects of the pastime isn't it that, um on one level krishna is punishing on another level actually he's giving so much mercy for all those offenses that kalya had committed but to top it all off, Krishna stopped because of the prayers of the wives of the Kaliya, because they were actually his devotees. They actually were fully surrendered to Krishna already. Otherwise, how would they be able to speak all these prayers? So to top it all off, Krishna could have finished Kaliya, but he spared him. And that's because of the mercy of the devotees. So not only was he purified, but he was also saved. Um, and this is really unique because every demon we've read about has been killed in the whole of Krishna's pastimes, in every avatar, practically speaking. That Kaliya is exceptional there because he was saved, isn't it? Because of the mercy of the devotee. So, this is the power of the devotee's mercy. They even they could save a demon. And that's what happened in the past time of Jagaya Madai, which my mom mentioned. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was ready to kill Jagaya Madai. And he spared them because Nityananda, Nityananda Prabhu said, um, just accept them like your children. As a, if a child was to kick a mother in the womb, the mother doesn't take an offense to that. So in the same way, the um, the wives of the of Kali are praying here. Now, the serpent is also your offspring, and you can excuse him once, although he has offended you, undoubtedly without knowing your supremacy. So we are praying that he may be excused this time. See, they also have that similar kind of prayer. Does anyone else want to comment or? ask questions or would anyone like to add to the um, points on Smita Mataji's question did that answer the question for you Smita Mataji I don't think it did fully <laughs> no Prabhu I, uh, you did I think it also makes sense and when you said things uh, it makes me think as well that the feeling has to come from us and the only way we can start having any sort of feelings is by chanting because that's the only way that all the um, dust from our soul can uh, be cleansed so we can start reviving our relationship with Krishna. That's, that's a really brilliant realization that you've had. And this is exactly, 
this is actually the this is actually perfect understanding you have now because this is the first the very first words of the shikshastakam is exactly what you said cheto darpana marjanam to clean the heart chanting the, the primary thing of chant the primary feature of chanting is exactly that we clean our heart um, because the heart is dirty it's like if you look at a mirror and the mirror's got dust all over it you can't see yourself all you can see is like a, f- a faint a faint image or a faint shadow of yourself almost you know and so we can't relate to krishna because we can't see the soul we can't see who we really are and so by chanting we clean our heart just like the way we clean a mirror and then by krishna's mercy we can see ourselves and we can see our relationship with him so you you've automatically got to the perfect understanding yourself yes thanks to you so let's continue reading um do we have another person who would like to read please and again i'd like to ask if um we could be on on the video because it's helpful for the discussions I can read if there's no other reader who would like to volunteer. I'll give you a chance to read. This is also another way to serve Krishna and the devotees. Oh, look, we have two, three. <laughs> How about we have Archana Mataji? We've not heard you read yet. Well, not for a while. Okay. Hare Krishna, Babuji. Hare Krishna. After the Nagpatnis um, submitted their prayers, Lord Krishna re- um, released Kaliya from his punishment. Kalya was already unconscious from being struck by the Lord. Upon, upon re- regaining consciousness and being released from the punishment, Kalya got back his life, a force and the uh, working power of his senses. With folded hands, he humbly began to pray to the Supreme Lord Krishna. My dear Lord, I have been born in such a species that uh, by nature I'm angry and envious being in the darkest re- region of the mode of ignorance. Your Lordship knows well that it is very difficult to give up one's natural in- instincts. Although by such instincts, the living creature transmigrates trans- from, from one body to another. It is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that it is very difficult to get out of the clutches of material nature. But if anyone surrendered unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, the modes of material nature can no longer act on him. My dear Lord, Kalya con- continued, You are the original creator of the modes of uh, material nature by which the universe is created. You are the cause of the different kind of uh, mentality uh, possessed by living cre- uh, creatures. By which, ha- um, by which they have um, obtained different varieties of bodies. My dear Lord, I'm born as a serpent, therefore my natural instinct, I'm very angry. How I- is it then possible to give up my acquired nature without your mercy? It is very difficult to get out of the clutches of your maya. By your maya, we remain enslaved. In- enslaved my dear lord kindly excuse me for my invite invitable material tendencies i surrender unto you now you can punish me or save me as you desire you want me to continue okay we can just pause there thank you so much mataji Okay, so what have what themes have we read about in this paragraph, which you'd like to bring up? What has Kalia realized from this whole, this whole, uh, this whole um, experience which he's undergone? This is what he's revealing here, isn't it? Yes, Shashi Mataji. Um, he is acting according to his nature, and he can't um, help the way that he's acting. And he's asking for forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice summary of that paragraph. Yeah.
I think he has humbled himself a lot because um, he's realized that, you know, he, uh, every soul is a servant of Krishna. And uh, humbling himself, he has kind of become a devotee of Krishna at the same time. Because the prayers are um, aiming like a devotee is praying that, you know, if you have the mercy on me and kindly excuse me and I surrender unto you. So it's, uh, it is totally surrendering on Krishna. Mm. Um, it's it's not like a show a show bottle, but he's, he's from his heart surrendering to Krishna. Yeah, yeah, good that point. It reminds me of the pastime of Indra, how he's surrendering to Krishna and forgive for asking for forgiveness. So it's like he's doing it from his heart. Which pastime with Indra? Um, when Indra is. Um, asking forgiveness uh, when he offended the devotees of Krishna, all the Vrajvasis by uh, pouring the rain uh, for seven days. And then he realized, uh, that, good, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So that's when he realized that, you know, Krishna is the Supreme. So in a similar way, Kalia has realized that as well. Yeah, that's right. So Kalia, he represents um, this, this kind of pride, you know, his pride and because he's very proud he's also very envious and we see a similar theme in the in the past time of indra as well because he was very proud of being the king of heaven similarly kalia was proud of being this very great and powerful snake amongst all the celestial snakes but he's realized his mistake here and he's ever in a very humble surrendered mood so then a question what does it mean to actually be surrendered? What do you think about this? What does it mean to be surrendered to Krishna? That that uh, that you you don't care uh, what happens to you. Okay. Any more? That um, the true purpose of life is to be the servant of Krishna, and he's the the absolute supreme. Um, anything and everything that happens is under him. Yeah, yeah. So realizing one's position as servant of Krishna and having that dependency on him, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Um, I just got one. Um, I was uh, listening to Radnath Maharaj's class and he says surrender means that, you know, you totally surrender. So whatever Krishna does uh, is for the best for us. So whether he does something um, that you like it or you don't like it or whether it is in um, what you want as well. But when you surrendered and at the same time, surrender means that, you know, um, you could be going somewhere, but uh, you shouldn't worry about uh, where your food is going to come from or your water is going to come from. Uh, or whether you're going to survive on it. Because uh, if Krishna is um, feeding the cow, uh, you know, all the animals and everything, um, in the same way, he is going to be, look, he will take care of you. So like if you are in a, um, in a very bad situation, um, if you just rely on Krishna and just... Uh, think that you know i don't have to worry about anything krishna is there for me um that's what i understood about surrender um mm -hmm. in any situation you should just leave everything on krishna and um whatever he does may not seem uh, the best thing at that time but it is the best for us yeah that's a nice uh, yeah, i like the example you gave as well about the um but like if you're on a journey and because uh, life is like a journey, isn't it? We're on this journey and we have certain needs. And when you have a, when you're on a journey, you have to have some preparations to, you know, carry you through. So we have certain needs in life. And in that way, Krishna, he provides for everyone in every journey, all even the animals in their journeys through life. So why, Krish why would Krishna not provide for us? Having that faith, isn't it? Anyone else have any thoughts about this term surrender? What does surrender mean to you? Hare Krishna Prabhu. So um, 
surrender means um well i think um it means that um um you don't expect um the result um you don't expect the result whatever the activities or you know as mataji said you go up and down, up in life is always ups and downs and whatever um happens um you just try your best and um uh, leave it all on krishna and then yeah that's okay Yeah, I like the, the the point you made about um, not do, not worrying about the results. We should know that if we're doing the right thing, then Krishna will definitely protect us. You know, um, and that makes me remember the the Pandavas. You know, in their life, they never did the wrong thing, ever. Never did they do the wrong to each other or anyone else. And uh, they were only faced with difficulties, one after another, after another, after another. But they had this like really staunch faith that by doing the right thing, Krishna will protect us. Don't worry. Don't worry about the result. Don't worry about the situation. It's what you do in the situation that counts. If you do the right thing, if you depend on Krishna in the situation and do the right thing, Krishna will look after you. Yeah. That's also surrender. Yeah. Amazing. Everyone's got really amazing points. Does anyone else like to share? Uh, Priti, your hand up. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, um, a few people have said it before. Uh, when I think of surrender, it's like um, you're you're going under that other person's shelter. So, like these, I don't know since when, but like in wars, if like um, there's casualties of war, or like somebody from the opposite side comes into um, that there you've you've captured them or something then it becomes that side's responsibility to look after that soldier like ideally not to cause them any further harm um so yes so um you've um when someone um surrenders onto you then it's your responsibility to take care of them so like they're under your shelter now mm. yeah that's a nice example as well it reminds me of the story of um, the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a similar scenario that happens where King Parikshit, he's the uh, the grandson of the Pandavas, right? grandson of Virgin Radha. And, uh, and he finds that the personified, that the pers personified Kali is roaming around in his kingdom and he's killing cows, right? So he is highly religious. He's a highly moral person. He's fully devoted to Krishna. Yeah. And he's a person in his, his kingdom who is acting so irreligiously. Um, perhaps these days it doesn't seem like so astonishing because everywhere you go, like you see um, cow meat, you know, <laughs> anywhere in the world. It's, just, it's disgusting. But... Uh, in that time, it was it's like it never happened before. This was like the first instance, practically. And uh, Kali then surrendered to him. He was there to battle with Kali and kill him. He raised his sword. But Kali surrendered to him. And then he took it upon himself. Parikshit Maharaj took it upon himself to give shelter to Kali. Even Kali, even the personification of this age of Kali, and how did he give that form of shelter? He said, Kali, the age of Kali, because we all know Kali is a very difficult age to live in. We're all living in this age of Kali. You can have your influence in four places where there's meat eating, where there's gambling, where there's intoxication, and where there is the um, illicit illicit relationships, illicit sex. So he gave Kali, a four, Kali four places to live, which is why in this day and age, practically speaking, Kali is the king because these four activities are happening everywhere. <laughs> so even Kali got shelter, even Kali got shelter at Parikshit Maharaj's feet. Um, well, the devotees are protected from the influence of Kali, by avoiding these four sinful things. 
So Bhagavatam is really amazing like that. It can show us how to be free from the influence of Kali by avoiding these four things and get shelter of Krishna by avoiding meat eating, gambling, intoxication and illicit sex. Yeah. Okay, so time is going on now. It'd be nice to hear everybody's. Um, did we have a couple more? I think I saw a couple more hands. Did we have others who wanted to share? I don't remember. Otherwise we can continue. I just wanted to sum up um, something that was shared with me on the point of surrender. So surrender was explained to me in, in it's two things. It's, uh, it's love and trust. These two things have to be there. Sometimes we can feel that Krishna, I love Krishna so much, you know, I love Krishna. I can do anything I like because I love Krishna. Yeah. And sometimes we, we can sway the other way. We can say, you know, I trust Krishna, whatever happens, Krishna, you know, we don't, we don't, I don't have to do anything for Krishna. I don't have to, I know Krishna is God, you know, and I trust everything he's going to, is going to make it okay for me. You know, I just, I just trust Krishna. And if something good happens, I trust him. If something bad happens, then, you know, what the hey. <laughs> but actually both of these two things need to be there. We have to love Krishna and we have to trust Krishna. So these two things is what constitutes surrender. To love Krishna and to trust Krishna. If we only have love for Krishna, but we don't really trust him, you know, because Krishna is a tricky fellow, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but if we don't trust him, then that's not full surrender. That I have something which I, I have my desire, which I think is better for me than what Krishna thinks is better for me. Then there's not full trust. That Krishna, what Krishna wants for us is the best. And we don't have full trust. I love Krishna. I love worshipping Krishna. I love Krishna consciousness, but I don't fully trust him because I have my own plan. <laughs> or we trust Krishna, you know, whatever Krishna wants is the best, but we don't want to serve him. We don't want to surrender to him. Yeah, Krishna has my best interest at heart. That's true. But then do we want to, sur do we want to serve him? Do we want to love him for everything he's given us? So both of these have to be there, the love and trust. <clears throat> so we're coming up to time it would be nice if we how long have we got we've got just a couple of few paragraphs left now haven't we so we can probably finish this chapter now do we have any more readers uh, i think Amuma, did you wanted to read oh sorry that's all right you carry on Panjali mata do you want to read you can you can continue okay. Sure, Mataji. Yeah. So, so one each then, if uh, Panchali reads one and one okay. Reads one. okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. So anyone who hears the narration of the Kaliya serpent and his yeah. punishment... Are we just on the paragraph before that, I think? Is that right? After, I, hearing, after hearing, yes, sorry, Prabhupada. No problem. Um, after hearing this, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who was acting as a small human child, ordered the serpent thus, you must immediately leave this place and go to the ocean. Leave without delay. You can take with you all your offspring, wives and everything that you possess. Don't pollute the waters of Yamuna. Let it be drunk by my cows and cowherd boys without hindrance. The Lord then declared that the order given to the Kaliya snake be recited and heard by everyone so that no one need fear Kaliya any longer. Very well. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, so now Krishna is ordering Kaliya. He said he's ordering him. I order you. <laughs> right. So Krishna has accepted him. He's accepted his surrender. Um, something I observed here in reading Kaliya's prayers, which were much more shorter than the prayers of his wives, notably, was he was he's he's saying, You know my nature, I'm a snake, I'm envious, 
um, it's not my fault by surrender to you almost, you know, he's saying all of these things have just been put upon me almost, right? But still I understand I surrender. So Krishna has accepted that and he's ordered him, get out from here. <laughs> you see? So Krishna has accepted his surrender, but he's kicking him out. <laughs> he sometimes said, she look, sorry, did you want to add something? Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so does that mean that Kaliya's repentance wasn't um, uh, full? I mean, he, he was only half-heartedly repenting and asking for mercy because he wanted to be saved because he still had that a bit of ego left in him didn't he so he has fully surrendered he has surrendered so Kalia is saying that you, now you can punish me or save me as you desire just in the same way that the wives had prayed um shamarani mataji mentioned as well that this is the way to pray to krishna to leave it to krishna to say um, if it is your, if if it pleases you, or if it is your desire, we leave it to Krishna. That's actually the prayer of a surrendered devotee. That um, here is my desire, but I am willing to go with your desire. So he has surrendered to Krishna. Um, but you can see how Krishna has uh, reciprocated with him. He's kicking him up. <laughs> yeah. So he, because he's saying, you know, these things are just natural for me to be like this. And that's quite true. <clears throat> so Krishna doesn't want him to be there. Um, and does anyone know the, what happened to Kaliya then? Prabhupada comments in it in some places as to where Kaliya went. In Fiji? Yeah, that's interesting. So Srila Prabhupada, he tells us that Kaliya went to Fiji, um, which is interesting. Um, and actually to the point that we have an ISKCON temple in Fiji. And does anyone know the feature of that temple? That temple is there. Does anyone know or can guess? <laughs> it's, um, Kali, um, it's Krishna dancing on Kaliya. Yeah, Iskon Krishna Kaliya Temple. <laughs> Just to, you know, Prabhupada had put his stamp on that place. Like, this is where Kaliya is. This is where we're going to have a deity, extraordinary deity of Krishna dancing on Kaliya, if you ever want to see. That's in Fiji. So, as we said, Kaliya is a, he's a, a divine serpent. He's not an ordinary serpent. Prabhupada has said that serpent, he lives in Fiji now. So sometimes we hear of these, you know, these oriental myths and stories about, you know, dragons and, and serpents and things. So maybe there's some connection, I don't know. <laughs> but we should take it from Prabhupada in any case, that that's where Kali is. Okay, in the next paragraph, unless there's anyone who wants to comment or question. Otherwise, uh, Amu Mataji, please read on. Anyone who hears the narration of the Kaliya serpent and his punishment will need fear. No more the envious activities of snakes. The Lord also declared, if one takes a bath in the Kaliya lake, where my cowherd boyfriends and, and I have bathed, or if one fasts for a day and offers oblations, to the forefathers from the water of this lake, he will be relieved from all kinds of sinful reactions. The Lord also assured Kaliya, you came here out of fear of Garuda, who wanted to eat you in the beautiful land by the ocean. Now, after seeing the marks where I have touched your head with my lotus feet, Garuda will not disturb you. Right. <clears throat> So don't be afraid of going to Fiji, even though Kali is there. <laughs> so yes, we've discussed this in a lot of detail now, isn't it? So there's another point here about the benefit of um, bathing in the Yamuna. That place is still there where Krishna jumped from uh, the tree. Does anyone know the name of that tree? 
Krishna jumped from a tree before to jump into the water where he um, Kaliyagat. Kaliyagat, that's right, yeah. So that place is still available to visit in Vrindavan. That tree has been identified by the Goswamis. And you can still go there. And people go there and they hug that tree and they make friendship they, they put friendship bracelets and things on the tree and they worship the tree. Because <laughs> Krishna's lotus feet have been on that tree everywhere in Vrindavan actually, but Krishna performed that pastime in before that tree, the Kaliya Ghat. And uh, <clears throat> as we read earlier, that tree is immortal because of Krishna jumping from there. Because of um, Garuda, who put nectar on that tree for Krishna. And so Prabhupada mentions that we can even offer um, Pinda from this place to our forefathers. That's also an important point. And do we have another reader? Or was there any comments or questions? Can I can I read the last small paragraph, please? Yes, please, please do. <laughs> Thank you. The Lord was pleased with Kaliya and his wives. Immediately after hearing his order, the snake and his wives began to worship him with great offerings of nice garments, flowers, garlands, jewels, ornaments sandal pulp, lotus flowers, as, and a nice eatable fruits. In this way, they pleased the master of Garud, of whom they were very much afraid. Then obeying the orders of Lord Krishna, all of them left the lake within the Yamuna. Thus ends the Paktivedanta purport of the 16th chapter of Krishna, subduing Kaliya. Okay, wonderful. So thank you everyone for participating, for reading. It's been really nice that everyone's contributed. I hope everyone could read a little bit every week. That's really appreciated. And uh, so many have got videos on as well. So appreciate that, that's helpful. Isn't it, it feels more like we're having a conversation together, right? If we're all here together and discussing together and reading together. Definitely feels more like a group or Sangha. Yeah, so appreciate that. <clears throat> Um, so we have in the previous weeks finished with one round of chapa. So if you have your japa kids handy or if you want to go and grab them, now's the time. Uh, I can't stay this uh, this week. They'll have to excuse me. So I'll see you all next week. No problem. Thanks, Hare Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'm just going to go and get my beads. Yeah, go ahead. Prabhu, I will take leave as well. Hare Bo. Okay. Hope to see you next week. All the best. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so let's finish with uh, one round of our chapa. Um, I actually thought it'd be nice if we could continue this even uh, after Kartik. So this weekend is the closing, is the end of Kartik, I believe. Kartik ends on the at the end of this month, so it's on the Monday. I think it ends on Monday. Is that right? Is anyone? Yeah. Yeah, is it Monday, isn't it? Yeah. So this is our, our last sangha in the month of Kartik. But I thought it would be nice if we could continue the japa. What does everyone else think? Yeah. That would be good. That's a good idea, Prabhu. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. Has a hand up. Yeah. Yeah, wants to ask. Um, so this uh, Bhishma Panch, I don't know what the name is. is Bhishma Panch. So it starts from uh, the Ekadashi. Um, and some people say Ekadashi for India is tomorrow. So that would mean that on Punam, Ekadashi would end, which is five days. But for us, the Ekadashi fast date is um, on Thursday. Um, but then if if Bunam is like just four days after that, why do we continue after Bunam? Because I would have thought that the month of Karthik finishes and then that's the end of, that would, at Bunam, that would be the end of like the Bhishma Bach something. Yeah, it's... Um... It's, a, it's a, a bit of a big question. Let me just grab my calendar. <clears throat> mm. 
<clears throat> um, so actually the Ekadashi day is tomorrow and there's a few technicalities in here which is what it's like a, <laughs> it's, it's opening up a big question <laughs> actually Ekadashi is tomorrow but certain Ekadashis are not suitable for fasting so the fasting gets moved over to the next day for technical reasons I'm not going to go into details and then that the next day becomes a Mahadwadashi so that actually becomes what we call Ekadashi but it's actually Mahadwadashi Bhishma Panchak is five days. Um, in, in short, these five days, if you perform the Bhishma Panchaka Vratas that are recommended, you get the benefit of doing the whole Chaturmas, which is four months, and the fourth of which is the Kartik month. So you get the benefit of doing the austerities for all of the four months, all of the austerities, if you observe the austerities for five days. Um, and so that actually begins, you're right, it begins tomorrow because tomorrow is actually the, the 11th day, the Ekadashi day, although Ekadashi is observed the next day. Um, and so that continues through till the last day of Kartik, which is the 30th in our calendar. Is that okay? In short? Yeah, it's just also, it's just that I also thought the Kartik finishes on the day of Bunam, which is. 29th uh, so on on the on the in the UK time zone the 30th is the last day mm. okay. that's the that's the last day because the moon will be in different phases in different places so that's another technicality and so it's not always because we go by a lunar calendar rather than solar calendar so we don't go by the daytime we go by the nighttime and the phase of the moon appears different where, depending where you are. So that's another thing. <laughs> yeah, this uh, was in the um, Bhaktivedanta calendar. That's okay. Yeah. The Bhaktivedanta manor calendar? Yeah, it's in there. It says Bunam is called 29th. It's got the full moon sign then. Yeah, okay. The calendar I'm looking at it says it's on the 30th. That last day of Bhishma Pranjik is on the 30th. But I can, yeah. I can perhaps look into this later. I think it, it, also, it also says that, that the last day is on the 30th, but I always thought that the final day would be the day of Bunam as well. Yeah, I can I can clarify that for you later, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah? That's big, right? Just mm -hmm. because of time now? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, generally it's five days, so one, two, three, four. Yeah, so then it would be five days being the 29th, the fifth day. Um, oh, actually, yeah, yeah. So it actually begins on the Dwadashi. That's what you're saying, isn't it? I've just seen that now. So it actually be begins on the 26th, not tomorrow. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's why it's on the 30th it finishes, because it has to be five days. Yeah, okay, I can see what's going on here. Because that's based on the day the days, whereas the, the calendar the the dates are based on the nights. You know, like Ekadashi is a is the is the eleventh night. Whereas the Panchaka is like the five days. <laughs> so there's two calendar systems at play. Anyway, um there's many technicalities to it, so um I don't want to okay. get into too much detail right now. All right. So let's do one round of japa for those who managed to stay on. And um, we start by chanting the Panchatava Pranam and uh, begin slowly chanting Hare Krishna. We'll speed up to our regular pace. Everyone can go at their own pace. If you can keep your microphone off, then we can all chant and hear each other. Um, of course, don't be too loud, um, but um, it's nice to all actually be chanting and hearing everyone. So let's begin. Jai Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Yadveta Radha, Shivasa Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Sounds like everyone is finished now. 
Thank you everyone for participating in the Japa and staying on. <clears throat> so it'd be nice to do this in the upcoming weeks, as I mentioned, right? Um, of course, this is the last week we have together in the month of Karthik. And as you know, I've been announcing every week, we're inviting the devotees, or rather we're inviting um, you to take part in a Damoda program, a virtual Damoda program. And um, I think in the last week, we've also had devotees in this group participate in that. Uh, Pretty, you had one last Friday, I believe. Yeah. So for those of you who haven't had, I wouldn't mind if Pretty could say a few words on your experience, how you thought it was. And then if anyone else would like for this final week, um, can also sign up for one Damodar program. How was it for you, Pradeep? Yeah, it was really nice. Um, it was a small, intimate one. Um, and uh, Bhakti Priya, she went through like uh, just the Damodar Leela um, and had a Damodar Ashtakam, um, who was sung by Shan Wallaba. Um, and what was nice is that there were some questions that I had and um, yes, a Bhakti Priya, it was, it was just nice if I heard something new and then I could ask questions about it as well. Um, so that was nice to get that one-to-one. -one. Usually you'd get that kind of one-to-one, -one, you know, when you're in the association with devotees at like temples and stuff. So it was, it was nice that I could do that because God thinks that things, yeah, that would be the norm around this time. Um, so it was, it was nice to have that. Um, to ask about questions uh, from the leaders you hear. So it was nice, I liked it. I'd recommend it to people, especially especially if you can get like friends or family who, who you know, even if they're Krishna Pucks, but don't know much about this Leela and what it what it, what it signifies and everything, then um, I think they'll, they'll like it, they'll enjoy it to hear the Leela. Awesome, yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, um, has anyone not had that chance yet to do a the Kartik um, to do a Damodar program yet? Because this is the last week until next year. So this is a really amazing opportunity. Do take it up. Um, you don't have to cook for anyone, which is great. You can have a program with all your friends. You know, you can have a small intimate program like Pretty had, or you can have like 500 people or something. You can invite the whole of the UK if you want. And you don't have to cook for anyone. <laughs> Right. And you get the benefit of having a Krishna conscious program, which you host with, with friends and family that you love, and people who you who you know who you want to introduce to Krishna. This is a wonderful way of doing it. So, um, so yeah, we, I can add a post onto our WhatsApp group for details on that. But Priya, my wife, will um, take you through the Damodar pastime and explain the pastime and give you a chance to ask questions as well as the sing the Damodar song and offer candles. So what could be more wonderful? Have a go. In this next week, try, try and find a spot that suits you and your friends. Okay. So thanks, everyone. We're quite over time now. Look forward to seeing you all next week. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Prabhuji, can I say something? Yeah. You want to give me a call, actually? Um, because I just want to say in the group to everyone. Oh, okay. Before uh, everyone goes. All right. on, on Friday at five o'clock, um, uh, having that um, uh, Bhakti Priya uh, Mataji in my group. So if anybody wanted to join in, they could join in my ah. group. Oh, sorry, I didn't uh, get a chance to say that. I didn't know she was joining your group. Okay, on so five o'clock. Those who've stayed on, they get that chance too. <laughs> All right. Or maybe you can you can put that in the um in in the WhatsApp group for anyone who wants to join. Okay, perfect. Give the information on there. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, baby. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.